Hey everybody, welcome to another quick cast video. This one is going to be about making a custom character sheet in GM Forge. So before we get started, I'd just like to point out that this video will get pretty technical by the end, but for the first half, you less technical users should be able to follow. So before we begin, I want to point out that we'll be using the Attributes tab, the Math tab, and the sheet tab for this video. So with that, let's begin. So in order to get started building a sheet, you simply create or click on the sheet button and then it brings you into the sheet edit mode. Here you can edit different uh, attributes of the sheet and break it down into individual components if you need to. As you can see, things will highlight and if I click on them, I can do certain actions to these things. So for this video, we're going to be creating a basic vehicle sheet. What it's going to include is a health bar, a name, an inventory, some stats, and an image for the vehicle. So to get started by making a blank sheet, I can go to the top and click blank sheet, which will clear out the sheet of all existing uh, setup. Here, if I want to go back to the default sheet, I can click on the default sheet and it will restore to whatever game you are playing. In this case, I'm playing the D&D 5th module, so I can restore back to those templates at any time. You'll also notice there's a pre-made sheet button for quick sheets that if you need something without having to build a lot, you can click on these and change the sheet dynamically. So with that, we're going to go ahead and clear our sheet. And then now we're ready to begin. So when you start creating a sheet, you can add a new element to the sheet by simply left clicking on it. Here you'll be greeted by a menu that gives you a bunch of options. Now, if we want things structured from top to bottom, we're going to want to use a column. If we want things structured from left to right, we're going to want to use a row. These are your basic organization tools for making a sheet. So I do know that I want to have the inventory or the vehicle name and image at the top. So we're going to start off by creating a row. You'll now notice that there is a new blank row in here, but it looks a little empty. Now I do know that underneath it, I'm going to want stats. So I can zoom out to the parent, which you'll see by this uh, very specific highlighting, and then hit new row. I'll also do one more for the inventory, which I want structured from top to bottom. So I'll use a column. Now I have my three categories. Here, I can add a new image by left clicking on it, going to the image button, and then the image is inserted for me. If I want to add a name, I just click outside, go to field, and then select the appropriate field. In this case, I want info name. Now I know I want to add more than just a name field in this position. So I can simply delete this existing field, add a new column to make sure I can group these different fields together, add new field, select the name, and then now it looks a little better and I can add new fields, such as a min-max field, for the hit points of this vehicle. Now you'll see that the hit points are structured down here. Now you'll notice that these two elements are spaced as far away from each other as possible. By default, this is what happens to the columns and rows. But we can simply make a change by going to raw JSON and removing the flex between class. Once that's done, you'll notice that this element and this element are one after the other. So now we can add our health bar by clicking bar, selecting the HP counter, and then now you'll notice that there's a bar that reflects the hit points. This is pretty much what we wanted to do for the actual vehicle stats, but now Let's add an actual stat line down below. 
here we can simply select the stat list for a quick implementation of stats and then we can add an inventory in the same fashion. Just like we did with the spacing we're going to want to remove the flex category here so that this row won't stretch to fill it will just automatically exist without taking up any more space. Now one thing that's bothering me right now is that this isn't centered. But luckily we can simply change the flex between to flex middle and it will put this thing in the middle. Any additional elements you put onto this row will also be put into the middle as well. If you need something a little bit more balanced you can use the flex around. But I won't be showing that in this video right now. So great, now we have a very basic sheet that will function as we need to for our vehicle. But vehicles don't have strength, they don't have dexterity, and they don't have these other stats. So we want to make some changes to make sure that the data actually reflects what this vehicle is. So I can stop editing this sheet and I can go to the attributes. And then I can manage the attributes for this character sheet. In this case, I don't want to keep any of these stats. I simply want a attack stat, which I can make by adding a new macro key, filling in the name, and then giving it a value. Note, I'm not basing this sheet on anything. It's just an example for you to use. I'll also use an armor stat. And I'll use a speed stat. Once I'm done with those, I can simply delete the existing attributes. And then go back to the sheet. Here you'll notice that all of these different spaces got added. And you're probably confused on why. What are they? Well, if we go back to the attributes, they're all the stats we deleted. This is because this particular template will enforce calculations based on, you know, what game you are playing. This is because there are system calculations that are enforced depending on what game you are playing. In this case, we can go to the math tab, clear out the automatic calculations, and then hit confirm calculations. Now you'll notice they're still here, that's because we have to go back and delete them. Once that's done, they will no longer appear. Now that I have you exposed to the math tab, let's go ahead and add in a custom calculation. So, in this case, I want to adjust my attack to be 10 when I have health that's higher than 8. Here you'll notice that it's red and the value is grayed out. This is because this calculation is not being applied. I can add a new calculation that will assign my health to 5 when my HP is less than or equal to 8. And in this case, you'll notice it's green. Now, when I confirm my calculations, You'll notice my attack is automatically adjusted to 5. If I make an adjustment here, it'll still go back to 5. This is because the calculations are enforced every time the sheet updates. If I set my health to 10, my attack will jump to 10 as well. If I set it to 9, it will stay at 10 because that was the parameters we gave it. Okay, so that about wraps up what I wanted to cover for the basics of creating a character sheet. You can add new attributes, you can add new automation, and you can also add new things to a sheet. In the next video, I want to make sure I go over how to make your sheets look better, how to make them do more, such as rolling dice or actually changing stats on your sheet, and how to also make things conditionally appear and disappear when you need them. And with that, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.